Well, the president's big push for gun control suffering a bit of a setback as the list of states opposed to new federal regulations and swearing to fight any new laws continues to grow by the day. Got word of just more even this this weekend. This is we saw impassioned testimony on the Hill last week from a powerful voice in this debate. A survivor of a mass shooting in Texas back in October 1991. A man shot more than 40 people in the Luby's restaurant that day, killing 23 of them. Susanna Hupp was there and lost both of her parents that day. It took a good 45 seconds, which is an eternity, to realize that the guy was simply going to walk around, take aim, pull the trigger, go to the next person, take aim, pull the trigger. He was executing people. Susanna says she does not blame the shooter for her loss, but instead the laws and the lawmakers who she claims left her sitting there unable to protect herself or her family. I don't view myself as a victim of gun violence. I view myself as a victim of a maniac who happened to use a gun as a tool. And I view myself as a victim of the legislators that we had at the time that uh, left me defenseless. Joining me now, author of From Lubies to the Legislature, One Woman's Fight Against Gun Control, Susanna Hupp. Susanna, thank you so much for being here. And I know that you are a former U.S. Congresswoman. I will refer to you as Susanna because I know you offer this testimonial in your personal capacity, in your capacity as someone yes. who, has, who has lived through an episode where a maniac unleashed hell on you and your family and so many others that day. Yeah. Take us back to the moment when he, he drove his truck through the Luby's window. First you thought it was a car accident, but soon thereafter sure. you realized he was there to execute people. And you thought for a moment, I'm, I've got this because I have a gun in my purse. Yeah, remember back in 1991, these crazy shootings weren't happening like they're happening now. So you're kind of waiting for some sort of... Uh, reason you know you're waiting for him to say everybody put your wallets up on the table or or something like that and it did take a long time 45 seconds is a really long time to figure out that he was just there to execute people so i did reach for my purse that was on the ground next to me i had a perfect place to prop my arm we had the table upturned in front of us and then i realized that a few months earlier i had made a really stupid decision i obeyed what at the time was texas law and began to leave my gun out in my car. So it was completely useless to me. And when you realized that, you felt like a sitting duck. You talked about how, what am I supposed oh, to do, God. throw a salt shaker at him? Yeah, the, the level of frustration, Megan, for anybody that's kind of a doer, the level of frustration, it still makes me angry when I think about it. Uh, there, there's, you can't go up against a guy with a gun with a salt shaker or a butter knife. Um, the, Look, I've had people say, well, you could have missed or your gun could have jammed. And I suppose those things are true. But the one thing that nobody can argue with is that it would have changed the odds. That's all I'm asking. Just give me an opportunity to change the odds. You're a doer and your father was a doer as well. And your father yeah. rushed the gunman. I mean, unarmed. Your dad was unarmed. Yeah. He rushed the gunman to try to save lives in that restaurant. Unfortunately, he was killed. You made a run for yes. an open window that someone had crashed open to try to get out the back of the restaurant and took your mom with you. But unfortunately, your mom would not leave the man she right. had been married to Right. I tried to, to take my years. mom. Yeah, I, I reached over. I grabbed her. I tried to pull her up. I said, come on, come on. we got to run. we got to get out of here. And then I made it out that back window. And when I turned around, realized that she had not followed me out. And the police officers, the first responders, several of them were patients of mine, and they told me about a week later that they had found her. She had crawled out into the aisle where my father had been gunned down and was still alive, still conscious, and she was cradling him. And the police officers said that they saw this 30-something-year-old man walk up to her, put a gun to her head. They said she looked up at him, put her head down, and he pulled the trigger. That's how they knew who the gunman was. Mm. My parents had just had their 47th wedding anniversary, and Mom wasn't going anywhere without Dad. Mm -hmm. And you feel like that day, you, t you talked about how, look, he was like, this gunman was like a rabid dog. You don't get mad at a rabid dog. Yeah. You, t you may take him out in the back and shoot him. You'd put him down. But, but you, you felt like the laws that constrained you, that made you, oh, yeah. I want, because it's your instinct. It's all of our instinct, most of us, to be a law-abiding citizen, to follow the rules. And you did that, and you really yeah. feel like that's what wound up costing more lives that day. 
Absolutely. And I can't tell you, there were a number of other people in the restaurant that had dutifully left their guns out in their vehicles that day. In fact, a couple of years after the incident, a woman, older woman, uh, approached me in the local bank and said, Susanna, you don't know me, but I want to tell you that my daughter was one of the ones that was killed there that day, and her gun was out in her car as well. Mm -hmm. And I know you say that you don't believe there's any coincidence that we see these things happening over and over again in restaurants, in schools, in malls, in places isn't where that amazing? They, they are gun-free zones. Yes, isn't it amazing that all of these mass shootings, if, Megan, if, if guns are the problem, then somebody explain to me why we don't see these mass shootings at uh, skeet and trap shoots or, or the dreaded gun show, you know, places where there are thousands of guns in the hands of at least as many law-abiding citizens. These creeps go to places where they know that they can rack up high body bag counts. And that just seems so painfully obvious to me. Mm -hmm. You know uh, that folks on the other side argue, why does somebody, even somebody such as yourself, who wants to defend herself in these circumstances, God forbid we find them, yeah. ourselves in them, why, why yeah. do you need a magazine clip that has more than 10 rounds mm -hmm. in it? You know, why couldn't you defend yourself with <laughs> something that's 10 rounds or less? Well, I may be a bit of a libertarian at heart, but I hate that word need. That strikes me too much of an of a, of a old communist thing, each according to his needs. How frightening it is to have a government committee determining what my needs are. Where will that lead? It's none of their business what I have at, at home as long as I use it in a law-abiding manner. Mm -hmm. And do you, yeah, Megan, I... Yeah, go you're, ahead. You're a mom, and well, it just, I know you're a mom, and, and I'm a mom, and I just can't imagine being back in that position, but instead of having my parents with me, have my kids with me, mm. and not have any way to protect them. That just, that just makes me ill. And I know you say that even people who are opposed to guns and, and you know, more robust Second Amendment rights would probably want to have somebody who had a gun nearby them. God forbid they found themselves yeah. in a lubies type situation. Yeah, I guess that's that's the old adage about, you know, you can you can be a liberal and talk about gun control all you want, but when you're actually in this situation, most uh normal people want to be able to defend themselves and their children or grandchildren. You know, I I don't know you Suzanne and I certainly didn't know your parents, but it sounds like you had a beautiful family and their instincts were so laudable mm -hmm. and I mean, each one of you, Thank you, your father acting so courageously and your mother acting out of love and your survival instincts yeah. and, your, and your initial courage to try to take on the gunman. Thank you for being here and telling your story. Uh, but thank you for having me. But let me make it clear, no courage. I, I ran out of that restaurant. But your instinct wasn't to run. Your instinct was to fight back. And then reason prevailed when you That's realized it wasn't, it wasn't possible. Susanna, thanks again. Thanks for having me. Wow. Have you heard her story before? Uh, she went to the U.S. Congress. She's been a congresswoman uh, for, for many years. She's been a, a lawmaker for many years and now has this book out. But it was not a story that I was familiar with, but unbelievable. Taking your thoughts on it on Twitter, at Megyn Kelly.